Hey guys, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris, with themodzoo.com, and today I've got a little bit of a treat from Case Labs. All right, so this is the Case Labs Bullet ITX. This is the BH2 model. Uh, this isn't going to be a formal review because that's not what this is as far as case goes. It's not a review sample. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview here, kind of go through it quick and show you some of the different little features of this thing. So one of the first things is that for Case Labs, this is actually pretty small. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this thing is not that big for what you would normally think of as case labs. They usually seem to have much larger cases, which is kind of sucks because I bought this radiator and I don't, I don't quite, I don't think it's gonna, how am I gonna fit this in there? It's just, hmm, crap. <laughs> All right, so seriously though, water cooling, Eh, it might require a little modding if you're gonna go crazy on it, but you could easily fit an all-in-one in the top. It's just It's an all-in-one. That's not really what I do <laughs> So I'm gonna take the top panel off here and it's the top and both sides and it's a ton of screws There's so many screws in this thing to get the top panel off. So I guess uh, Let's get on with it So now that we've got the top panel off of this thing, you can see how many screws there were. And that's because it's all one piece, so that's one reason why it uh, takes so many screws to hold this thing on is because these sidebars here, so this one and this one are actually optional. Uh, they are, I think they call them the light bar kit or the light mount kit or whatever. So the idea is that with these bars, you could either mount the LEDs on the insides here, this angle there or here. So that way you'll be at zero degrees to shoot your light straight that way into the case. You could be at 90 degrees to shoot the light straight down into the case, or you can be at 45 degrees to kind of angle it towards the middle. Kind of a cool idea. I don't know how particularly necessary a lot of it is. Like, I feel like you could just get away with the 45 degree and the beam width on those LEDs will probably be enough. Like the, the pattern of the LEDs probably go out in this direction anyway. So I feel like if you have them on the 45, it'll probably be fine. But still kind of neat that you can direct the light a little bit in whichever direction you want. But the top panel, this one I got with the dual window option. And these are some uh, studs on the inside here. So they have these little screw posts with a nut on them. And that's what actually holds the window in. So it's not one of those annoying little stamped in windows that have that little recessed channel that you have to try and mess around with if you want to try and get a different window in there. You can actually just go ahead and buy a replacement piece of acrylic, drill a couple of holes, cut it to size, and throw it in there. So 
Obviously, this came with the protective paper still on the window, so you have to peel that off before you <laughs> go ahead and install everything, because you, you do have to do that with the cover off, because it's all of this piece on both sides. So you do have to take it off of the side panel in order to get all of this paper off. So keep that in mind if you end up with one. You probably want to take care of that well before you ever start installing hardware and get everything buttoned back up. So on the top, there's a little bit of mesh, and I like it. I like that it's not just round holes and it's not honeycomb. I mean, there's nothing wrong with round holes or honeycomb, don't get me wrong. It's just something different. I like different. That's pretty much all there is to this one. Uh, I should say that this was all made out of one piece, and it was just two bends with radius on it. So if you wanted to make your own, you could probably figure it out with a, I'm guessing, a length of pipe. If you can find the right right diameter of pipe to make these corner bends, I'm willing to bet you could probably figure out how to make your own top panel. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the bottom, but you take the bottom off the same way. So there's few fewer screws. Uh, well, actually, I think it might be about the same number of screws, actually. So there's three screws around here, and then two on each end. Same thing on the other side, four on the bottom. That comes off if you want it to. And then that leaves you with pretty much the front, the back. If you leave these light channels on here, you get to keep those, and then the fan bracket on top. And then you have two mid plates here. And these two mid plates, there's one that covers up a bunch of stuff, and then one that the motherboard actually mounts to. And the one that the motherboard mounts to is held in place with four screws. And what you can do is take that out to get inside of the case. So down here where you're installing your power supply, your F SFX only power supply, you can also install some hard drives or you can install some SSDs or whatever. But that panel comes out so that way, you, if you wanna take it out to manage all your cables, it's a lot easier. I like these. I think more case manufacturers should include those, but this is just a little rubber bumper that sits underneath your motherboard, right where you'd be putting your graphics card in. So when you're pushing on your graphics card to get it to install, to get it to clip into the PCI Express slot, don't have to worry about, you know, potentially harming your motherboard by pushing it down and bending it. Front plate, I could see that being useful if you were to do a custom water cooling install. If you wanted to, say, mount a pump there, I think that'd be a pretty good place to mount a pump. It's pretty convenient. I don't think it'd be too hard. Um, it's, it's a pretty well-built case. The bottom panel here, you can also take out so you don't actually have to try and fiddle with all of the you know cramming your hand into a small little nook in the case trying to get to the spot where you have to tighten the screws for the hard drives and all that kind of stuff so you just kind of get these four screws out of the bottom and then this panel well <laughs> zip tied to the cables but then this panel comes out you can also remove these two cages so there's room for mounting up to i think it's four ssds or two hard drives and they have a bunch of screws and grommets and rubber shock mount things to install all of those but another place that if you wanted to customize something say you wanted to have a big reservoir pump combo you could probably mount that to the bottom but again I think the biggest problem with this case is gonna be trying to fit a radiator in it, but yeah, we'll figure that out, I think. Should I water cool this one? Let me know. I think I probably should though. <laughs> they, also, they also include these four little rubber feet. Uh, they're decent quality, I think they're all right. I, one of the first things I would probably do is get rid of them, get some new ones. Just nothing wrong with them as far as quality goes. I just kind of feel like they're a little on the small side for this case. And I feel like they may be a little bit understated too. So I think that would probably be one of my first stops would be finding a couple of new case feet to put on the bottom of this. But there's room for a pair of 120 millimeter fans on the top and if you wanted to, 
there is room for a radiator up top, like I said. An all-in-one will probably be easiest, but if you wanted to stop at a 240 radiator, this would probably be the easiest option if you wanted to do a custom water cooling loop because you have room in the front to mount all of your reservoir pump stuff and then you'd have room to mount your radiator and your fans up here. So that's pretty easy. Um, there are also two spaces for 120 millimeter fans in the front but that you are not going to be able to get a radiator in on the BH2. So the ITX version, not really. So you kind of have your standard power button with your light, your power light on the inside. And then you have your headphones and microphone jack and a pair of USB 3.0 ports. The cables that you get with those front IO things are either black for the USB 3.0 headers or actually sleeved from the factory. So that's kind of nice that you kind of get that little touch of premium with nicely sleeved cables. And it's pretty decent quality sleeving too, so it's not like the cheap see-through stuff. So that's, that's nice. That's one less thing you have to do if you're not concerned about what color your sleeving is, as long as you're okay with the black sleeving. Works great. So once again, I'm Mosquito, also known as Chris. That was the quick overview of the Case Labs Bullet BH2 ITX case. And be sure to check back for more to find out what I have in store for this thing. This is the Mod Zoo, after all. Can't leave anything stock, can we?